This is lesson four in our Calculus 2 series, General Logarithmic and Exponential Functions. In this lesson, we define a to the x for all real numbers x, and its inverse function log base a of x. And here, we're talking about a being positive and not equal to one. So far, we know how to compute a to the r for rational numbers. This is something we reviewed in pre-calculus. For example, 8 to the 2 thirds can be computed by taking 8 to the 1 third power and that results squared. So that becomes 2 squared or 4. But we don't know how to make sense of a to the x for irrational x values. For example, how do we compute 8 to the pi? We don't have a way to do that yet. We only know how to compute e to the x for any real x because we know e to the x is exp of x and exp of x we define to be the inverse of ln x. So the only exponential function that we've defined for the entire real line is e to the x. More generally, for base a, where a is greater than zero and not equal to one, we're going to define a to the x to be e to the x ln a. So for example, 8 to the pi that we were just looking at would be defined as e to the pi ln 8. So that is the number for which the ln function takes on the value pi ln 8. And notice that this makes sense in terms of the rules of exponents that we have already for rational numbers because e to the x ln a can be written as e to the ln a times x and we can compute this as e to the ln a all taken to the x power, and so that's a to the x power. And with this definition for a to the x, we still have the same rules of exponents for real x and y values as we did for rational x and y values. So a to the x times a to the y is a to the x plus y, a to the x over a to the y is a to the x minus y, a to the x all taken to the y power is a to the xy power, and a b quantity to the x is equal to a to the x times b to the x. Now let's take a look at derivatives with a to the x. The derivative of a to the x is by definition the derivative of e to the x ln a, and so we're going to use the chain rule here. That says we're going to take e to the x ln a, and then we need to multiply by the derivative of x ln a. So e to the x ln a can be simplified as a to the x, and so that goes here. And then the derivative of x ln a, remember that ln a is a constant, and x is our variable. We're taking the derivative with respect to x, so the derivative here is just ln a. So that tells us we have the derivative of a to the x is a to the x ln a. And notice that this holds for the derivative of e to the x because that would say the derivative is e to the x ln e and we know that ln e is one. So for example, with y equals five to the x, y prime is going to be five to the x ln five. And a little bit of a more complicated example involving the product rule, we have g of x equals x to the fourth times four to the x. And so g prime is gonna be the derivative of the first times the second plus first times derivative of the second. That's the product rule. So derivative of x to the fourth is four x to the third multiplied by four to the x plus x to the fourth multiplied by, now the derivative here is four to the x ln four. So simplifying, we can factor out a four to the x, and we can also factor out an x to the third. And what we're left with is a four plus x ln four. Now I just wanna point out the difference in differentiation rules that we use here for x to the fourth and four to the x. x to the fourth is a power function. It has x, the variable, in the base of the exponent whereas four to the x is an exponential function because it has x, the variable, in the exponent. So when x is on ground level and you have a number up on top, that's a power function. That's the derivative rule that we learned back in Calc 1. So here we have four x to the third. But now that we have a constant base and a variable in the exponent, that's an exponential function, and so now we're using our new derivative rule. For compositions, a to the g of x, we need to use the chain rule. 
And so the derivative of a to the g of x is going to be a to the g of x times ln a multiplied by g prime of x. So for example, let's take a look at y equals 10 to the tan theta. So notice here that a, the base, is 10. And instead of x, we have theta. So our derivative is going to be a to the g of theta, so that's going to be 10 to the tan theta, that's here, multiplied by ln 10, multiplied by the derivative of tan theta. So we have 10 to the tan theta ln 10 times secant square theta, and that's our derivative. Now let's take a look at integrals with a to the x. We know that taking the derivative of a to the x multiplies by a factor of ln a. So taking the antiderivative of a to the x is going to divide by a factor of ln a. So we're going to have the integral of a to the x is equal to a to the x over ln a plus a constant. And of course we can check taking our derivative, the derivative of the right hand side here, a to the x over ln a plus a constant, is equal to 1 over ln a times the derivative of a to the x plus 0. All I did here was move my constant multiple of 1 over ln a outside of the derivative, and I took the derivative of the constant as 0. And so derivative of a to the x is a to the x ln a. The factors of ln a cancel, and we're left with a to the x. Remember, any time you take an antiderivative, you can check by taking the derivative of your answer. Now let's take a look at this integral, integral of x times 3 to the x squared. Now we notice here that we have a composition of functions. We see x squared plugged inside the exponential function 3 to the x. So we let u be the inside function, so u is equal to x squared, and then du is equal to 2x dx. So let's take a look at what we have. We have an x dx, we need a 2x dx, so let's multiply in by a factor of 2, and then compensate for that by multiplying by a 1 half on the outside. Now we can change our integral to be written in terms of u, and we get 1 half integral of 3 to the u du. Using the rule that we have up here, our antiderivative of 3 to the u is going to be 3 to the u over ln 3, or 1 over ln 3 times 3 to the u. Our factor of a half comes down as well. We add in our integration constant. Now simplifying and returning back to x's, we're here. 1 over 2 ln 3 times 3 to the x squared plus a constant. Now let's take a look at the graph of f of x equals a to the x. Now when we talk about f of x equals a to the x, we're always talking about a being positive and not equal to 1. f prime of x is a to the x ln a, and a to the x is always positive, and for a values that are greater than 1, ln a is positive. Remember that ln a is defined to be integral 1 to a of 1 over t dt. Since a is greater than 1, this is a positive integral. So this product is positive for all x values, and so that says when a is greater than 1, we have that f prime of x is positive and f of x is strictly increasing. For a between 0 and 1, f prime of x is a to the x ln a, and in this case we have ln a negative. With a being between 0 and 1, we negate the integral and reverse the order of the bounds to recognize it as the negative of the area. So we have that this product is negative for all x, and f of x is strictly decreasing. So one thing this tells us is that f of x, no matter if a is bigger than 1 or between 0 and 1, f of x is going to be a 1 to 1 function. So we know it's going to have an inverse. But let's also take a look at its second derivative so we have an idea of the shape of the graph. The second derivative is a to the x times ln a quantity squared. So a to the x is always positive, ln a quantity squared is always positive, so f double prime is always positive for all x, and f is then concave up for all a values that are greater than 0 and not equal to 1. When a is greater than 1, we have an increasing exponential function.
and when a is between 0 and 1, we have a decreasing exponential function. Now let's take a look at logarithms of base a. Since f of x equals a to the x is a one-to-one -one function, we can talk about its inverse. And we're calling that inverse function log base a of x. So what we're saying here is that log base a of x equals y is equivalent to saying a to the y equals x. Now let's take a look at the graphs of log base a of x. For a greater than one, we have f inverse of x equals log base a of x looks like this. Remember that the graphs of inverse functions are reflections through the line y equals x. And for a between 0 and 1, we have our log function decreasing like this. But I want to point out that we don't usually write logarithms with a base between 0 and 1, because in fact we can rewrite the log with a base that is greater than 1. So let me show you what I mean about that. For instance, if we're looking at f of x equals 1 third to the x, we could write that as 3 to the negative 1 all to the x power or 3 to the negative x power. And so let's call that y and let's find the inverse of this function. First thing we do is solve for x. Solving for x gives us log base 3 of y is equal to negative x. And now switching x and y gives us negative y is equal to log base 3 of x. So y is equal to negative log base 3 of x. So what we're doing here is we're recognizing the same graph, the same function. We're just writing it with a base that is bigger than 1. Instead of writing y equals log base 1 third of x, we write y equals negative log base 3 of x. So for example, if this is 1 third to the x, or 3 to the negative x, then its inverse function we would say is y equals negative log base 3 of x. So you can see it's the negative of a graph that is shaped like this. Remember multiplying by a negative sign would reflect the graph over the x-axis. But anyway, let's continue. Let's talk about derivatives with log base a. To find the derivative of log base a of x, we're going to use the relationship between the derivatives of inverse functions that we learned in the first lesson. f of x equals a to the x and g of x equals log base a of x are inverse functions. We want to find g prime of x. So we know that that's going to be 1 over f prime of g of x. What's f prime? Well, f of x equals a to the x, so f prime of x is a to the x ln a. Now we need to plug g of x into f prime. So we need to plug g of x into f prime. And that's going to give us a to the log base a of x multiplied by ln a. And then by composition of inverse functions, this is just equal to x. So our derivative is 1 over x ln a. We could find the same result by using implicit differentiation. So if y is equal to log base a of x, that's the same as saying a to the y equals x. So let's take a look at this equation on the right and let's differentiate with respect to x. The derivative with respect to x of a to the y is going to be a to the y ln a multiplied by dy dx. And on the right-hand side, the derivative with respect to x of x is equal to 1. Now solving for dy dx gives us 1 over a to the y ln a. But what's a to the y? a to the y is equal to x. So this is 1 over x ln a. Same result. Now using this result for compositions, if we have the derivative of log base a of g of x, our derivative is going to be 1 over g of x ln a multiplied by g prime of x. So let's take a look at this example, and this is going to use both the regular and the chain rule versions of this derivative. We're given f of x equals log base 10 of x over x minus 1. Now the first thing I want to do is simplify this by using laws of logs. So we write this as log base 10 of x minus log base 10 of x minus 1. And then we're going to take the derivative 
here. If you don't do this, you can still use the chain rule, but you're going to have this quotient in here for g of x, and then your g prime is going to require a quotient rule. So it just looks a lot more complicated that way, and it's much easier to make a mistake with all of that. So that's why we like to simplify. So from here, taking the derivative, the derivative of log base 10 of x is 1 over x ln 10. And the derivative here, we need to use the chain rule, so we're going to have 1 over x minus 1 times ln 10 multiplied by the derivative of x minus 1. And that's just 1. So our derivative looks like this. And this is much simpler than what you would have gotten if you had used the chain rule directly on this. Now let's take a look at integrals with log base a. Here we see a log base 5 of x inside the function that takes to the second power. So we see a composition of functions, and we're going to let u be that inside function. So u is equal to log base 5 of x then du is going to be 1 over x ln 5 dx. So let's take a look at our original integral. We need an ln 5 in the denominator in order to make our du. So we put an ln 5 in the denominator and we also multiply by ln 5 on the outside to compensate. And so writing this integral in terms of u looks like 3 ln 5 integral 1 over u squared du. And so that's 3 ln 5 integral of u to the negative 2 du, or 3 ln 5 times u to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. Right, we add 1 to the power, divide by that number. And so simplifying here, I'm taking this negative 1 from the denominator and just bringing it out front. And I'm also bringing this u to the negative 1, I'm bringing this u down to the denominator. So we have negative 3 ln 5 over u plus c. And then let's make sure we answer in terms of x's. We have negative 3 ln 5 over log base 5 of x plus c. And that's our solution. Now let's take a look at a logarithmic differentiation problem with exponentials. Here we have y equals sine x to the x power. And we want to find y prime. And I want you to pay close attention to what's happening here. We have a variable in the base and a variable in the exponent. So remember the difference between x to the fourth and 4 to the x. x to the fourth has the variable in the base, constant exponent. 4 to the x has variable in the exponent, constant base. This is a variable in both places. So we can't use either of those rules. The only thing we can do in order to be able to work any math on this is to take the log of both sides. So you want to look out for a variable in the base and a variable in the exponent, and you want to take the natural log of both sides of the equation. So we take ln y is equal to ln of sine x to the x. And then laws of logs allow this x to come on down in front. And that's what's going to allow us to then take the derivative. So now we want to differentiate, but be careful, we have an ln y on the left-hand side. So our derivative with respect to x is going to be y prime over y. And on the right-hand side, we're going to use the product rule, derivative of x times ln of sine x plus x times derivative of ln sine x. So on the right-hand side, we have 1 times ln sine x plus x times, here we have an ln of g of x, so remember its derivative is going to be g prime of x over g of x. So the sine x goes in the denominator, and its derivative cosine x goes up on top. And if you like, we can write this cosine x over sine x as cotangent x. And we're almost done, just remember that we were asked for y prime, so we need to solve for y prime. So the next thing we do here is multiply both sides by y, but we want an answer only in terms of x. So we replace the y with its sine x to the x power. And this is our solution for y prime. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on general logarithmic and exponential functions.